I'm Jacob, I'm Yuri. and we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty two Hyundai Kona. End line without launch control. A little slow off the whole shot there. Horsepower and torque. 195 horsepower, 195 pound feet of torque from a 1.6 liter turbo four cylinder for a complete horse pork. Okay, it used to be 201. Yeah, numbers drop down. And then this is a DCT. Yeah, it's a seven speed DCT, which I am not a big fan of. And then N line is not a full N. This is an appearance package on the normal Kona. Which looks basically exactly like the real N. But then like on the Sonata, that actually got more power, but there was no Sonata N, there's only Sonata N line. Yeah, and this one doesn't get any additional power and it doesn't really get any additional handling. Okay, and what does this compete with? The closest competitor would be the Mazda CX-30 Turbo, but then there's also like the Honda HRV, the Toyota CHR, Nissan Kicks, and Subaru Crosstrek and stuff like that. It kind of reminds me of my GTI, my 2010 GTI. This is kind of a hot hatch. This is a, a warm, warm hatch. All yeah. Right, let's send it through Cliche Corner and this one is all wheel drive. It understeers at first, but then it kind of catches itself. It, it handles better than I thought it would. Yeah, this is actually still pretty fun. Ooh, lanes. Oh yeah, there we go. Like I mean, it, it understeers good. way less than I thought it would. And remember, we really liked the old hatchback Elantra GT N-Line manual. We were surprised by that. That thing was fantastic. I get those vibes from this. I don't quite get that. I really like that. That felt just, it just felt more put together. But that, this, was front, that was front wheel drive. Yes, exactly. But this is like a front wheel drive biased all wheel drive. So it only sends traction to the back when it needs to. And you can't really control the distribution of it. I'm in sport mode. I have full traction off. I have sport shifting but you can see most of the power in the distribution gauge going to the front. Yeah, kind of as expected, but we also have this lock button. So if we did need to get to our millennial owned cottage up that millennial owned dirt road or whatever, technically yes. this has a little bit of off-road capability at slow speeds. Yeah, so it'll let you lock the 50-50 distribution up to I think like 30 kilometers per hour. Nice. And we don't have any paddles with this seven speed DCT. We can only control the shifting with the shifter, but I'm gonna leave it in sport. I'm just gonna floor it. There is a really big delay. There's almost like two shifts that have to happen and they're very slow. And it's even bad with the shifter where it's like up for up, down for down. Even though the shifter is awesome. The shifter itself, yeah, but I'm gonna downshift. It won't let me actually right now, even though, there we go. I'm gonna floor it. There. It's, like like that, it's slow reactions. Very slow, but like for, and, for a dual clutch. And line, we are being tricked by the amazing looks and we should really just like think of this as like a kind of crappy sport model or what's like a lower trim uh, Hyundai model? Uh, I mean, they used to have sport, like Elantra Sport. But sport would have been an N line. Yes, so, uh, like, so what, below that. Before that? Yeah, yeah, I don't know, like a limited or something. So this is the first gas powered Kona that we've reviewed since the launch when we had that cool acid yellow one yep. on an airstrip for some reason where we drag raced it against a bunch of other slow subcompact crossovers. Where we claim the world's slowest drag race. This looks freaking awesome. This looks amazing. Like it looks so much better than the previous one. Not that the previous one looked bad. I love the end line because it gets rid of all the plastic cladding and just paints it. Do you like the looks of this more than the Kona EV? Yes. I kind of like the Kona EV still. I feel like the Kona EV looks like stayed really good the whole time. Do you like the Kona EV looks over the real N with the additional power in your head as well? I mean, like, I don't think I'd, like, I, I think the EV is fine. Like, I don't want a fast subcompact SUV. Yeah, but now that the Ionic 5 exists, do you like the Ionic 5 over the Kona EV? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, exactly. 100%. It's like, it's like the coolest design ever. Yeah, I think that looks even better than this. Like, oh, way 100%. Better. It's like one of the coolest looking cars ever. Yeah. And we'd give it a car of the year if we've driven it, but we haven't yet, so we don't know. But we will. For hopefully. looks, for so, looks, for yes, looks. Yes, yes. And other than the painted plastic cladding on this one, differentiating itself from the regular Kona, this actually gets three kind of nostrils, which is like an N or N line thing. Yeah, it, lo it looks good. Yeah, the updated headlights look good. I mean, good. it's the <laughs> same joke we use every friggin' Hyundai video, the same a designer from Audi doing Audi things on Hyundais, but yes, like Hyundai stands out. I'm not gonna like say they're copying anyone. No, and then in that first video, as we said, we predicted, or I predicted the Conan, Conan? Yeah, yeah, it's coming. Yeah, this is the Conan line. Conan line. <laughs> Conan line. Conan line. Okay, these wheels, are they the same wheels that are gonna be on the Kona N? They look very similar. They look very similar. 
And what would be the Continental recommended tire for a Kona N-Line? The Viking Contact 7 in the winter or the Extreme Contact DWS 06 Plus. And while we're doing sponsor plugs, if you're looking to buy one of these and you live in the United States, tsp.truecar.com. Discounted price offers. Yo, one more sponsor plug. We always hook me up with the snowblower. Oh, nice. Sick. I didn't get one. That's no. only a Yuri sponsor That's all plug. the Yuri, Yuri influencers. It's because you're not verified on Instagram yet. No, I'm, I'm a fake account. Even it's, it's, it's really fake. Jacob. Might not really be Jacob. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another sponsor plug, uh, Tim Hortons. Just kidding. This is not sponsored, but uh, small cup test. It does not fit in the back cup holder, but it does fit completely fine in the front cup holder. Yeah, I'm all right with staggered cup holders. I feel like a lot of cars now have staggered cups because I guess people do have taller ones that they want to make sure don't jiggle out. Right, exactly. And the next sponsored plug, do these visors pass? <laughs> we are sponsored by the visor industry. I, I bet you that's going to pass and this won't. Three, well, that's a good guess. Two, one. Oh, Whoa, no, both. full pass. Ah, thank you, visor industry, for sponsoring us. And then for N-Line, we only have dual exhaust on one side. <laughs> yes. Doesn't sound that good from the outside. No, it doesn't. Let's take a listen. And the diffuser is weird. I feel like it needs to have some texture. It just looks like it was like an afterthought. Right. And in here, there's no pumped in. There's nothing in here. It's kind of got this like shysty like <laughs> zing <laughs> before anything happens. Like. Yeah. Like, what is that? That transition. I, I don't know. Like, this powertrain. I loved this powertrain when it had that 201 horsepower yeah. rating. Now that it has this 195, I don't know what they did to it. Yeah, but this is all-wheel drive, and none of those ones we drove was all-wheel drive. And True. I think that has to do with something, because it's probably, like, you know, making sure it doesn't break on itself or whatever. Yeah. But let's talk about the suspension quickly. Uh, Handling-wise, it's actually quite good. Not as good as that one Elantra N that we drove a while ago, the hatchback. But it is still pretty good. All-wheel drive does understeer a little bit. But suspension comfort is really, really good. For a car like this, I didn't expect it. It's really well insulated, except on the highway, it gets a little bit loud. But overall, daily driving, there's no real issues with this. Yo, it's almost like a budget Golf R. Ooh, that's a, that's a hot take, Yuri. Title of my video, like, it's <laughs> like if you don't need full Golf r you can get this. It's right? like a very mild. It's like, like if, if you want an all-wheel drive GTI, an automatic, you get this. Yeah, yeah, and lifted-ish. Hot take of the century. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Because you can't have all-wheel drive without lifting it unless you're crazy like Subaru. Right. And in which case, like, here's an STI, drive through this uh, winter stuff, drive through this off-road course. Cool. Pretty much. All right. So with that hot take, let's get you into the driver's seat. I want you to try a brake boost. And I put the tires in snow so they uh, make noise. Let's do this. It's got, it's got like no launch capabilities, but no. it's good off, like once you get going. That one was a little bit better actually brake boosting it. And the brake boost was like, it was like, yeah, like wow. This, this thing off the line, this transmission, it's that's the whole problem. But it's an N line. Yeah. It's not an N. Should have just given it a regular auto. It, it's fine. No, I mean like for normal putting around, there are no issues. Like, hey, I'm driving. Oh, I need to go onto a highway. Ooh, it finally started to accelerate there. But for normal people, they don't care. But if you're trying to pass someone on the highway, you can still pass someone on. The, it, it, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll you, be you fine. have to anticipate the amount of lag. Okay, interior-wise, we've got these cool digital display on the gauges. Full digital. Yeah, I really like it. It's got really smooth animations. Nothing weird, stuttering. I, I wonder if they fixed that because of us. Dude, like, I think so. Our breakdown, where we complained that like certain things were running at one frame rate while other animations were running at another one. Because nothing since we complained has had that problem. Yeah, and it all looks looks really good. We got a drive mode button here, normal, sport and smart which is like your auto and then we've got heated and ventilated seats and a heated steering wheel which is pretty awesome <laughs> that's why like usa probably doesn't get that but like stoked to have that in canada and then there's one gauge mode that you forgot about which is the cube mode because oh, yeah. it's not tied to a gauge mode <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> which yeah. is ridiculous it's interesting all right a little cliche corner Ooh, boot turn in is good see i sh on a normal car in the winter i would have plowed out yeah and that pulled me back in yeah you're right as far as i'm concerned Handling an all-wheel drive system on this is great. I'm watching it send more power to the back as you accelerate. 10 out of 10 Hyundai Kona N-Line handling on winter roads in crappy conditions. I give it a 7 out of 10. 10 out of 10 for my expectations. Ah. Like, I, I wouldn't expect any more out Fair. of this. Okay. And then we've got a head-up display, but it's one of those screens that come up, which I feel like I haven't seen in forever in any cars. <laughs> yeah, when I first started this up, I saw it pop up. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is still a thing. And if you're short like me at 5'8", it's a... Uh, perfectly fine if you're tall like Jacob at six foot one and a half 
you just stare right down at the hood. And it's, uh, it's, it doesn't really work. No. But I think they need that for safety reasons, for their uh, like uh, braking intervention stuff. Mm. So it's like their only way around it. And then for other cool safety features, it does have blind spot monitoring, lane assist, it does have rear cross traffic alert, and it also has really good adaptive cruise and lane centering. Yes, which is highway driving assist and it works really, really well on the highway. And I'm gonna start using the word adaptive cruise instead of radar cruise because on the Subaru Forester video, because it's eyesight and it's cameras, everyone got mad at me, and you're right. I've always called it adaptive. <laughs> I, like, I like the word radar cruise, but yeah, yeah, adaptive. It's, uh, it's really good. It's Because it depends if it's using cameras and whatever. I think it's highway driving assist one. And even yes. It's like since, since the end, since the beginning of time, Hyundais have always had the best adaptive cruise and lane centering. Time that we've driven Hyundais. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So, yeah, this would be amazing for like daily driving and commute and stuff like that. Very good. And some people in the comment were saying that I should be a petrol head. Why am I concerned about safety features? Just drive the car. It's like, it's not about me. It's about everyone else on the road. I want every random person to have this because if they suck at driving, this will save me a little bit. True. The Prowler is not a safe vehicle to be driving in. I need all the help I can get. Yeah. <laughs> and this infotainment is Hyundai's new style, which is pretty good. But in the Kona, I feel like they gave it a lesser of a chip where everything's kind of laggy and it do also doesn't register your inputs as well. Yeah, it, it is kind of crappy, but it does have volume knob, tuning knob, and a bunch of hard buttons where a lot of the other newer Hyundais just have like all capacitive touch. Exactly, and then Android Auto, Apple CarPlay is full widescreen, it looks great. A Sirius XM, you got those bulbs, which I hate. Yes. I just want the big picture of the radio station and then you can rewind, so that's cool too. But setting your favorites is messed up. Yes, because if you want them to rewind, it pushes your other ones out. You can only have the first couple. It's it's a little weird. Yeah, I, we brought it up before. Just fix it, Hyundai. Yeah. Or don't, I don't care. <laughs> Just do whatever. Oh, yeah. we got uh, all hard buttons for climate. That's nice. We also have a little separate LCD display, so your actual climate is like completely separate, which is great. And we got some uh, red accents on the interior and a bunch of end stuff, which is cool. Looks. Yeah, but it says end, not end line. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I tricked a couple people on Instagram. They're like, oh my God, you have the new Kona N? And I just didn't say anything. Clickbait. That's right. I clickbait everyone on Instagram. Follow us there. Okay. And then the seats are uh, very comfortable. I have no issues with them. No, they're really well bolstered going through Cliche Corner. No issues. Very, very comfortable. Materials in here are fairly cheap. This is kind of like the Veloster where you get a lot of hard plastics and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't mind that. And then rear passenger room is a little bit tight for myself at six foot one and a half sitting behind myself, but Yuri's totally fine. Yeah, me behind Jacob or Jacob behind me, we fit perfectly. And then if we move on to the trunk quickly, I feel like this has similar room to a GTI, maybe a little bit more. Yes, it has very similar. I think it's 0 0.7 less cubic inches of cargo space, which is basically the same thing. I, like if I was putting a stroller or some like baby uh, attachments or something in the back, I feel like I, I'd rather have this than my GTI anyways. But with the seats folded down, this has considerably more than a GTI. So I feel like that's pretty much everything with the Kona N-Line. I have one random fun fact for you. Hit me with it. I looked up the weight of this vehicle. It weighs 200 pounds more than my 1987 Mustang GT Fox Body. Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Look I don't really know what to take of it, but it's, Fox it's body's not that big. No, but it's, you know, old cars are pretty light and this thing is small and my Fox body is fairly small by modern standards as well. Yeah. Well, that's, that's it. That's Fun fact right. of the day. All right. Let's get to the price. This one is $33,999. Canadian. So we have this $500 optional paint, which I would highly recommend. It's a very nice red. Yeah. Don't get this car in black because then you lose all the coolness out of it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I like it. I, and I think if you want a all wheel drive GTI and don't want to go for the Golf R, it's a good alternative. And then this has hard buttons and stuff where the GTI and new Golf R infotainment's awful. Yeah, and then the CX-30 Turbo, which is the closest competitor to this, also offers all wheel drive, very similar driving experience. I think even better driving experience, better interior, but it also costs even more. Yeah. But I also think this one even looks a lot cooler than that one. This looks cooler than that one because that one's got all that cladding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's an interesting mix. If you're going between 630 Turbo and this, I think that would be an interesting decision that someone would have to make. For sure. Let us know. Let us know in the comments below. Yeah, and if you're shopping for one of these, tsp.truecar.com. <laughs>